Hello to you, beloved listener. This is Jan. I am currently recording this introduction in the south of France, my beloved Provence, where the the sun is shining on my face, far away from uh, my adopted Glasgow and Scotland. Today, we're talking about an unlikely friendship of uh, Don Shirley and Tony Lip Vallelonga, who also are going south, but south of the US at a time where segregation was still in place. You've got different ways to treat race in filmmaking, and we thought that it was a interesting way, and probably the way you should do it instead of uh, shouting and insulting people every day, even though we are aware of the controversies concerning this film. We thought it's uh, clearly worth... Uh, your time watching this one, so now is the episode. Um, as always, you, you can support us on Patreon. So that's um, patreon.goodbadstandardpodcast.com and that will be a direct transfer to our Patreon page. Thank you again. Hello, everyone. Hi, Hello. Um, today is um, another proof that we can't have nice things. <laughs> In case it wasn't clear, the film we're about to talk about, Green Book, is not a biopic of Donald Walbridge Shirley. The film dramatizes the events that happened between Tony Lip Vallalonga and Donald Walbridge Shirley during a musical tour in the Deep South of the US in the 60s. So definitely not a white man being the protagonist in a black man's movie. Um, the screenwriter is Nick Vallelonga, the protagonist's son. So we got that side of the story. So, um, Green Book, can you read that? Uh, Eine besondere Freundschaft. I think that's a wonderful friendship. Yes, yes. And uh, y- you've got the same kind of uh, added stuff in the French one, uh, w- which is uh, focused actually on the trip. Uh, sur le bord des routes, like on the side of the roads kind of thing. Okay. And in Argentina, it's una amistad sin fronteras. So it's more focused on a friendship than on individual people, even though it's actually, it's uh, Tony Lip's journey. But yeah. Uh, the title of the book refers to a segregation era travel guide founded by Victor Victor H. Green and published yearly between 1936 and 1966. Gee. Ah, yearly? Yes. That's interesting. I mean, that would, of course, that would change, yeah. Gosh, it's like a racist Guinness Book of World Record. Well, or, or like um, how, you know, you get like Lonely Planet, I think is the the one I've seen for like traveling. Like if you go to a city, mm-hmm. like the company that used to make books or e- even like AA roadmaps or whatever, like companies that do produce. Even nowadays in the world where a lot of stuff is online, I mean, I, when I go to certain cities, I'll use City Mapper, for example, which will give mm-hmm. me directions, but yeah. it won't necessarily tell me like things to do, which what this book, the Green Book is. Yeah. yeah. Well, what the only thing that you can do if you're black and in South America, Southern America, I shouldn't say South America, Southern America. So I went to see this. It was actually the 10th uh, secret and limited film of the year last year. And as it was around the time that other of very high profile movies were expected, people never know. So at least three people, when they saw that it was not the movie they were expecting, they just left. Oh, really? I told that story with an Osferatu. It sounds a bit like that, doesn't it? You know, you, you don't know what it is and then you're just bitterly disappointed. Although they've missed out on a good film, I think. Well, yeah, yeah, I, I mean, good. depends on what genre of film you like to watch, but that's sad that people feel like they have to walk out of a film, like they have, have vehement fe- feelings about certain films that they can't even watch it. Well, I mean, pr- it was probably more the aspect of like, what, well, I can talk from experience, you know, thinking I was going to see the 400 Blows and instead I saw Wang and a Fly. Yeah. Yeah, Which well, is the running joke this year, by the way, because I've mentioned it in about every episode. It's not even out yet. Yeah. So uh, there you go. There's a running joke this year. And even more of a joke is I actually watched it and it's... What people refer to it because it's actually the very first film in the Nouvelle Vague, the new wave from Francois Truffaut. So uh, I think it's probably only because of this, because I watched it and it's kind of a 
toned down version of um, uh, Rebel Without a Cause. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it was made at um, um, three years after Rebel Without a Cause. Four hundred blows, yeah. Okay, I'm not sure what you what you mean by um, this is a a black man story. And so, are you saying that M- Mahershala oh. Ali should have been the protagonist? No, it's not me. It's the so uh, every year when the Oscars are coming, you've got uh, campaigns to get the movie uh, Oscars, and you've got campaign to. Uh, bring the movies down in flames right uh the actual brothers of don shirley complained and marshala ali and marshala ali actually apologized because he didn't have all the elements and that's what everyone is saying uh, about this film okay i sorry i totally disagree with those people i don't think that this because oh, <laughs> I don't know. I think that it was really nice as as well to see a black man in a Hollywood film that is coming up to toward Oscar season um being as refined and distinguished and intelligent as he is. Like I don't think there was any stereotypical and of course that's what the film is about that I'm not a stereotype of a white man because I'm not white but I'm also not a black man so who the hell am I? Mm. Which I think is the most incredible thing to say in a film that's being put up for oscars because that is probably the feeling of anyone who is mixed race or brought up in a country where their parents aren't from it's like who where do i get kind of fit into the world so i kind of i don't know i I kind of disagree with i i see i see what they're saying because it's like this is about a black man and then you're putting a white uh you're making it about a white man right but then again, like uh, uh, Italian immigrants weren't treated great either. Not saying they're treated the same, but you know what I mean. I think as well, I've seen a lot of people refer to this movie as reverse driving this daisy, which mm. is, I mean, I, I, I wish we didn't live in a world where we, if a film is, has a similar, just because you've got somebody driving somebody in a car that's, you know, instead of Morgan Freeman driving uh another person well that's problematic because it wasn't that the problem that as soon as they go in the south they the people in the other cars are looking at them funny because it's like it shouldn't it be the other way around and police officers saying why are you driving him like outwardly like not even keeping mm-hmm. it in your mind because you're embarrassed like very outward racism mm. um P- peter farrelly one of the famous brothers who uh they did uh, uh there's something about mary and all this nice comedy. So one of the brothers, Peter, directed this. Uh-huh. Okay. Yeah. Yes, yes. I, I got to say that it takes a time to get... Uh, you used to see um, the guy... You used to see uh, Viggo Mortens- Mortensen as Aragorn. or mm. like, And to see him like this is a bit... It takes a bit of adjustment. To <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I think there were moments where I was like, oh, that Italian accent, it just feels so different and... It, it's, uh, there were moments where I was like, "That that's that was quite strong." Like, would people really sound like that? And he's a very committed actor. We'll go in deeper when we talk about Lord of the Rings at some point about how he links to a character or finds his way in. Uh, there's a story to do with Lord of the Rings where he used one of the props as his way in. So he always gives. He always tries to find a way to bring himself and like you know meet in the middle with everything and. I, uh, the word that springs to mind is he's a very committed actor, commits to everything, like full full pelt. Because okay. whenever you see him in a role, he's always different in a degree. Because I can remember him in The Road, mm-hmm. which is a really dark and depressing and very odd movie in a sense of like a Twenty Eight Days or a book of a book of Eli sort of vibe going mm-hmm. on. And then to see him in this, which is his character is very, you know, comic relief, lighthearted, but with a serious tone to him too. Like it's rather interesting actually. And I think I think Viggo Mortensen's a great casting for it. This is based on Tony Lip, who actually was a bouncer at the Copacabana and was an Italian man brought up in the Bronx. Mm. And so yeah, that would have also and it probably shows as well the kind of prejudices that Italian immigrants had at that point this was 1962 1962 Dolores 
Tony's wife um, has um, a problem in her kitchen and she's got two black workers there. He comes, Tony comes back into the kitchen and throws away the cups that they were using. Like, that is entrenched racism, man. Mm. Oh my goodness. Like, you can't even keep the cups that they touched and drank from. I thought that was also a really nice, subtle way of like showing Tony Lip's character because it wasn't like, oh, by the way, this guy is racist. It was like a really different way of showing the audience. It's well dramatized. And I think that people are not really understanding those who say, again, that... um it's basically that the the real the truth is that actually they were never friends and uh, uh, Tony in the eyes of Don Shirley was always just an employee and all that kind of stuff. Mm. Well, maybe, but that's not what the movie is about. No. Also, they that change each other, don't they? Isn't so that's isn't that not true? Because it says at the end of the movie they were they continued to be friends until they died months apart of each other in two thousand thirteen. Yeah. After this, though, I think Jan meant that. They weren't friends before he brought him uh, on the job? Yeah, no, the family says that they actually never were friends. The relationship was just employee-employer. Hmm. Ah, okay. So the that, film totally got it wrong. But, I mean, okay. it's, it's always, the thing is, the, always the, just like um, the, just like Itania. It's just, the, 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 there are two sides of the story. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. So we get we we got. But what I understood is that the the son uh, Nick Valalonga had plenty of recordings from both. Yeah, that's why I understood uh, for sure from his dad, but apparently also from he had he had the the um, the clearance to do the movie after Don Shirley's death for sure. He said, you, can, you can do that your, your film, but after I'm I'm gone. But oh right! Yeah, yeah, but true events. I well, it's 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 you always have to drama. It. Well, they they had a message, and the message is uh, is is good. I think. Yeah. Rather than uh, we, we, I talked, uh, I sneakily veered into that territory a few times in the episodes. Rather than just always sticking a label white black man, if if when it's people and you evolve, the guy starts being blatantly racist with the um yeah with the glasses and then the wallet uh, on the windshield. Yes, yes. And gradually he just realizes that they are both human beings and it's just, that's. That's, I think, the way to to do it instead of uh, uh, s sending, continue to send oil in a boiling pan, kind of. Uh, psh, oh. mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, like, well, I, it's all about preaching, right? Like, if you want to tick a box, it's very obvious for an audience to watch and be like, you're just doing this for a trend, which is fine. But also that's problematic because when that trend is over, then what do we do? Like you kind of have to fight for the same thing. It's the same. Like we're having this problem with with women in in film. We don't want it. No, I'm kidding. Um, just this like box ticking. But then again, you have to start somewhere. So I think it's 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 a weird balance that we have to get. Like sometimes, you know, you take what you've got we're kind of working on it, the kind of equality in film, right? Like it's always hard to change things. People don't like change. And so you have to sometimes do the things you do. Yeah, because I was, I was thinking recently, I was like, isn't The Heart Locker the last time a woman won for Best Director? Which I, was, which definitely was, I remember, because... Yeah, then yeah. Because there was a conversation, the conversation this year, because this is, this is accurate because it's part of our, um, for audio listeners, I'm looking up the Heart Locker, the details with that. Um, the Catherine Bigelow, I think that was the name, or Bigelow. Mm -hmm. Yes, but that might be the last time there was a female one. I can't remember if she won director or if she won, it won best film, I know that, but I don't remember if it won, if she won directing, that's what I'm trying to Clarify. I think you also you have to be careful with that because there are lots of people that if they see a woman in um like the protagonist role or it's about black people and their and their etc people will use that and say like oh look this is a box ticking thing like they're just doing it because it's a trend and actually it's just a film 
that like showing people and the what they went through because we have never seen those stories before so it depends heavily on the voters because plenty of films are snubbed you know the two current ones there is one is destroyer and the other one i don't remember whether two beautiful actresses in the us and they were like made less beautiful right. there's a nickel kidman and i don't remember it did it won it won best director and best picture so she did win best director yeah in 2010 right so, so it's 9 years ago 9 years ago the conversation this year is a lot about after last year we, there was a lot of the time up movement. There, ha, there's no real movement forward. Um, it's also so. just celebrate the people around you. So you know now you and this wasn't always. Um, every time a photo is put up, they will credit the photographer. They'll credit the makeup artist. They'll credit the dress, the shoes that they're wearing, the jewelry in on Instagram, like on social media. That wasn't always the case. Like I specifically mm. remember, um, a- actors wouldn't put up who was involved in the process, and yeah. I think that's a really important thing because you do realize that there are women everywhere. <laughs> But they just might be behind the scenes and they should be as celebrated as anyone else, right? Yeah. And so I think that is an amazing movement towards good. I don't agree with this is a black man's story. So why is Viggo Mortensen telling it? Um, because actually I think Mahershala Ali had an amazing role. He did so well. It was so beautifully acted, especially because, you know, when you watch a clip of something and it doesn't show you the immense the feelings that you got from a film Mm. actually he somehow is able to show it in every single sentence that he does and i think that's incredible acting especially if you're doing it on the standpoint of you he could have made this really monotone a very boring because i'm distinguished and i'm a classical pianist and i speak like this but he put so much heart and passion into it mm. that somehow it wasn't boring it wasn't monotone it wasn't samey and that's skill man so i feel like you need to focus on the actual performance rather than i don't know that i th- sometimes i think it's a problematic to make it immediately about oh this is a trend why are you pandering to the leftist <laughs> whatever you know I think that's sad because this film is an, is amazing. Like I, I actually want to go see it again. The, yeah, the the a film now a film exists on its own merits, right? I th- I I feel like yes. Sometimes I I I do see that yes, there are it is problematic. Sometimes you're like, oh, for God's sake, like you're just pandering, and you don't you know you know that the director and the people involved are, are just want to get the money back. But I think that that's with everything that doesn't need to be about p- people of color and women and, you know, because it's like, oh, whatever, a trend. This can happen anytime. Like Hollywood is full of these films. So the fact that we're attacking on it now is interesting. And I think that, that the the reason why we're attacking on it now is because we don't like change. Mm. Anyway, we're going off topic. I mean, we're not, but uh, we can talk about the film. There was the... <laughs> The, the the thing that is in the trailer the the chicken wings <laughs> um, so the hilarious thing is is that they made that so much better as well because when he goes to the is it the first dinner that he has in the deep south it's one of them for sure yeah and he actually oh the the sentence is we asked the help oh. what you guys like to eat and so, and then they open up like a, is it what, a, co- a cosh, a conch, cosh? No, it's not a cloche. It's, it's not a, a cloche. Because the cloche is, the, is this the one that you pull off? It's oh, like, right. it's, it's like a, a hostess sort of trolley thing, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But also they come in with platters as well. So the whole table gets to eat this delicious food that is, you know, usually only meant for people of, cu- like, it was just, like, I think all three of us just hands to mouth, like, oh my, I cannot believe that this is a thing. We asked the help what you people eat. <laughs> Shocking. But this is the thing. This is the amazing, the nice ways of showing what life actually probably was like. And you can see the immediately that where how the relationship is working on the, the wing thing that is actually in the trailer on the road mm-hmm. so there's the bones and then tony's all happy with the whole thing and just throws out the uh the um, the drink 
Also, the, from the con, Perfect. it's funny how you look at context of trailers. Funnily enough, I know Yana voice trailer. The trail, I saw the trailer for this, and it made me want to go and watch the film, which yeah. was an interesting. We experience. were in the cinema, though, to be fair. So yeah, that's true. <laughs> it's hard um, to watch trailers. And in the trailer, the context of that scene is they're just in the car having fried chicken. The context of the movie, they they arrive in Kentucky, to which Tony's like, huh. Kentucky Fried Chicken in Kentucky. When's that going to happen again? So he immediately drives off to KFC because he sees the, he sees the billboard. This is before KFC is KFC. Yeah, before it's yeah before it's like a before chains or a thing. conglomerate. Yeah. yeah, and and then it evolved from that. His excitement of having this food. He's like, you got to try this. It's great. It's Kentucky Fried Chicken in Kentucky. Kentucky. <laughs> and then it evolves. It's like I've never had fried chicken. He's like, what? Yeah. And then it becomes that conversation about, oh, that's what you people eat. Well, that's that's where the the conversation that I brought up before comes because um, it really nicely actually is slightly jelly beaning over in this film. Yeah. Because you have that fried chicken, then you have the the deep south dinner where they make fried chicken for him um, because he's the guest of honor and that's all he eats, right? Um, and then of course he brings it up saying why do you take it? Why do you take all this abuse? Like if someone spoke to me like that and he does, he decks, he decks a police officer, uh, Tony Lip, because he says, oh, now I know why you're driving him because you're pretty much the, uh, something like that. You're pretty much at the same league anyway. Um, and he punches him. Mm. But, um, there is the jade that is also jelly binning. Oh, the, the stone. Oh, the yeah. stone. Beautiful. Yeah. Mm. Um, and, it's also interesting as a British person, I think, to watch it because we don't know a lot about the Italian experience of coming over to America because we didn't have that. We so it's in it's also interesting to see how different countries have their subcultures and immigrants. And Glasgow kind of had an Italian thing during the Second World War. Uh, there's a play. I can't remember the name of it off the top of my head. I'll link it in the end of the episode that I did at high school. It's about a family that comes over that's Italian and the relationship. She goes, there's a daughter and a, and a Scottish boy mm -hmm. and they have a relationship and then she goes back to Italy yeah. later on. Anyway, so there, in history, yeah, we did have a tiny bit of Italian migration yeah but america definitely because it was that then after the war and you know even even before you know when it was becoming the land of the op opportunity sure sure you know, so. yeah and it's bigger as well so i'm sure that there was but um so it was interesting to see how um oh i think this police officer said like oh you're not really white then Some, something like that and there's that kind of th even um tony lip t says that himself like i I'm more black than you because I like fried chicken and I'm broke and you're in your on your throne and you're rich and you're working with the you know the elites and you're pretty much surrounded by white people all day etc and I'm more black because I'm you know I'm I have a community and I'm broke all the time and I work from paycheck to paycheck etc and that's when um Don Shirley says well, if I'm not white and if I'm not black, then what the fuck am I? Which really got me because it was like, well, yeah. Because I, I honestly, when Tony the Lip, Tony, it's just Tony Lip, isn't it? Mm -hmm. um, speaks, I actually didn't know the answer to that question, which I thought was interesting. I didn't know what he would say because I was like, well, yeah, you're, you're kind of right. Like what, what, he does have like a struggle as well. So what are you going to say to that? And then he comes up with that and you're like, yeah, it's it's true. He's totally alone because he doesn't fit in anywhere. I quite like this in this film. It's clear when we get to the, the relation, you know, the term buddy comedy, you know, like two people that should, won't get along, you know, the two worlds collide and then somehow they work, they work it out together is a story well told. But I like how they, they, they mix the two worlds completely different and the idea of two different minorities, you know, in America for sure. And, you know, two different races together. Yeah. And you look at it through that lens and their relationship becomes, in the film sense, there's no real difference between the two of them except maybe class by the end of it, you know. And even then they have this sort of, they have this, 
real relationship with each other and you buy it you buy into it as an audience and contrast with a world that doesn't fully accept tony and does not accept um don shirley at all to a degree i mean they a lot some of the good scenes in this film are the the outhouse scene is particularly a standout moment for me it's sh- it actually shocked me mm. because um so this is the scene where Don Shirley wants to use the bathroom and he isn't allowed to because he has to use the, I mean, what would you call it? It would be called an, the, a, literally an outhouse, yeah, yeah. Um, outside. A shed. <laughs> a shed. A shed, yeah. It's literally like... A hole in the ground. It looks like the one in Shrek, okay? Donkey. Like, not to bastardize the situation, but it does look like the one in Shrek. Anyway, um, and... But also the the vehemence of this um the the white guy because yeah, it's his house of like i am not allowing you to use this bathroom like not even one person and it's like the this this in, ingrained thing of like it doesn't matter if you've just been at my house you've been shaking hands you've been eating our food like you're... we think you're this amazing intelligent person but do not use the same facilities as us because you are not really human. It's not, it's, it's even separate. It's even more in that sense. It's like, you're our extreme, you're our distinguished guest, but at the end of the day, you're still staff to us. You're only here to entertain us. You're not, we're not inviting you into our house to socialize and you play the piano and whatever. You are here performing a service for us, a service for us. Yeah. And we are superior to you. Yeah. Um, Um, I don't know about you guys, but that kind of way to get a message through is way more effective than bombarding you uh, all day. Like, uh, yeah, you're a racist and uh, all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. You'll at one point, well, uh, when we do at last our Would You Watch the Rest spin off uh, podcast, we'll watch the Quantum Leap. There is an episode called The Color of Truth, which is in those times. Uh, in the US and we'll also watch the uh, Doctor Who Rosa mm-hmm. and you'll see the, that that's also a huge, a huge uh, difference in how uh, we do things these days uh, preaching and all pandering to all those people that you don't want to pander because they are loud but they don't buy the tickets anyway so mm-hmm. <laughs> the word pandering I don't know I mean sometimes we say pandering when it's pure storytelling you know, when a, when, a, when a film or a TV series or a piece of media or even literature has an idea, but the filmmaker or whoever's in charge of giving us that piece of information doesn't necessarily handle it in the way that we think is the best, i.e. giving it to us, I think the word pandering comes out because it's the easiest way to tell somebody something is to just tell them stuff. It's like, all right, let's say I'm giving you, I don't know, Anouk, I'm going to give you a piece of toast. Like, Anouk, I'm going to make you a piece of toast. Hmm. Or an easy a, a way of showing I gave you a piece of toast is like I say how was your toast? That's kind of pandering in that sense of poor storytelling. Or you Wait, arrive with the toast. Or I arrive with the toast. Or right. you, or better, what you see you hear and you again. This goes back to conversation we had the other day about seeing uh, with with Roma about how the. Uh, Sorry, what's his name? I've forgotten off the top of my head. The director of Roma. Alfonso Cuaro. Yeah, Alfonso Cuaro. How he must have imagined shots from his past. I'm imagining serving you like toast. So you would, you, it'd be you asleep in bed, really tired. And then you'd hear like the ping of the, the toaster. Mm-hmm. And then like the plate would go down at the side. And then you would know brought, you brought her toast. Right. Without having to show me bringing right. you toast. So, so you're saying that there are some films that it's just to get bums on seats really but that, they don't actually think about progress society anymore or m- allow people to learn from watching this or make it an experience and, and a storytelling experience rather than just making sh- like oh you know what people are really into right now women that, let's put a pr- female protagonist in that's pandering yes that's absolutely pandering i mean uh, well probably what i'm trying to argue is pandering when it's unfortunately bad storytelling like i there are sometimes there are interesting ideas that aren't very well executed and we've seen films and we will continue to see films that have ideas that aren't well executed 
Look at The Illusionist for my example of how something wasn't executed well enough, in uh, my opinion. A vegan movie. Or a ve- <laughs> vegan Yeah, movie. no stakes. No stakes. You know, it's it's sad when pandering, when pandering for pandering's sake, i.e. this is a popular issue, catchphrases that were popular at the time. Like if you hear somebody in a movie go, what's up? Now you're like, that doesn't make any sense because that has been and gone. That movement is over. Like talk to the hand. You know, pandering in that sense. And then there's pandering in... Oh, you know, what's a, what's a hot topic right now and that sort of thing. So sometimes pandering... I mean, you'll get that. Poorly executed storytelling sometimes comes off as pandering and sometimes there's just blatant, it's there for no reason. And I agree, yeah. I agree. It's a long, way, a long way around of saying, yeah, I agree with Jan that this does it well in the sense of storytelling. It makes sense in the story and it also works as a moral for the story and a, a whole discussion point is that you're affected by a scene in a movie and you go... I, but why how is this happening why was this allowed to happen which is a much better way of just going there's a sign on the door that says whites only and then oh sad face and then walks away yeah what's nice though is that um they they learn from each other so of course it, t- tony lip starts out as being really racist and then learns through this experience that actually this is someone who is a person as you mm. were saying earlier but also has the same, well, not exactly the same, but has moments where they deal with racism every day. They can kind of, uh, this really nice moment where Tony Lip's like, why do you take it? Like, I, you know, I, I would have, I would have punched him. It's, it's, it's that. It's like, and he talks about how dignity will always prevail. So sometimes you take the shit, but it's because if you lash out, you're the one who will major majoritively because the this situation is racist they will look at you and go oh look another angry black man and so it's it's a lot more nuanced but it means that it's really difficult to watch because you're watching this guy who we've you kind of you grow to love go through all this shit and he just takes it on the chin he does drink a lot though mm. so maybe that's his way of dealing with it this this horrible thing of like you know i i he speaks like a white man the f- he speaks so well something that i think about when i watch movies like this or even any movie that talks about like segregation or being a minority is i don't know how that feels so i can't it's when i when i'm when a movie makes me feel something for that character because it makes me curious of like we all because we a we live now We'll, we'll never know what that situation would feel like. So I think that's a really difficult job for a filmmaker to have. Oh, yeah. To, oh, make, I mean... to, make, you f- to make you relate to that feeling. Well, it's, it's relative because here it's actually visible. But as a Scottish person in a huge uh, United Kingdom, <laughs> you're kind of a small... A kind of a minority, so well, I guess, but not to the same degree. I mean, I'm not being not. I'm not like. There's not English only bathrooms, and there's not. You know, I can't. I'm, I, I can't. There's not a book where I have to stay in Scottish only hotels and whatever. So I mean, in that sense of like real a- abject, because of obviously because of history, we know about segregation in America. But I will never. Nobody will know what that feels like because that that situation. Even though there are situations that are not great in the world right now, and the quality is far from equal in a lot of cases. Nobody will really know what that feels because we weren't around at that time. So I think it's quite, I think it's a great achievement for a film to make you feel that. And that's mainly down to, I would say the performances of the two actors in this film. Right. Um, yeah, definitely. The, the, the one that comes to mind immediately is when uh, Don Shirley see, they break down right next to a field full of yeah. slaves oh yeah well they're not there wouldn't be slaves they're just they're workers i thought they'd be slaves no uh, slavery is abolished in 1860 oh this is 1962 it's abolished in 1865 um when the 14th amendment is changed in the declaration of independent of the american constitution yeah i mean it wouldn't be as late as 1960 um 1860 i think it's December something. It's 1865 for sure. I, I will look. So up it's been about a hundred years that slavery's been abolished. But they, when they're in the deep south, they are still working in the fields, and they. they I think the whole th- thought process behind it is that they are supposed to look like slaves in terms of they are there. They don't want to be there, and they're dirty and 
there's like an, an air of there's a different experience here with Don Shirley um, coming out of the car while uh, a white man is <laughs> actually um, sorting out what's underneath the hood of the car. Yeah, driving uh, him. Yeah, while he's in a, you know, Shirley's in a, a suit and looks like totally clean and also has an air of like, I own this car and this, per you know, etc. And then they see each other and there's a moment of like, this is a lot more complicated than, and that's history right there because this is, this is a black man who a hundred years ago would have been a slave. So the 13th Amendment is the Constitution abolished slavery and involuntary servitude except as a punishment for crime. They first tried to get it passed in, in April 8th, 1864, but after an unsuccessful vote, they manoeuvred it by, it was it was extended, Leslie Strait is manoeuvring by Lincoln. The House tried again then in the following year in 1865, to which it was ratified by the un, all, all but three of the Union states. And then eventually by a significant number of border and reconstructed southern states, so i.e. after the Civil War, would re, as we know them today, reconstructed as the southern states. So eventually it was passed on December 6, 1865. So yeah, so it's been about 100 years. I think there's an also a generational hate, uh, anger, right? Like, even though you necessarily, well, I mean, of course, in this film, he does go through horrible things, but he's never been a slave, right? Well, the guy is not immortal. Yeah, if it was 100 years ago that it was abolished, there's no way he could have been a slave. Well, he was the first guy to, he was the first black man to go to a music conservatoire wasn't it the, where he went to yeah 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 that but i mean that would have that would have taken a long time i, th I think it's 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 amazing how we've we've had this whole thing of like oh yeah now the black people are equal it's going to be the same and it's like why why would it be the same like these people have come from slavery they have no they had no education no land no background and that that is something that travels through right mm. you have to work extra 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 hard to get to somewhere which might have been easier for someone who has parents who are already educated and have access to certain things. I mean, it's so much more nuanced than that. Like, oh, you're free now. And do you know what I mean? So it's like, this would have taken a long time to get to feel like equality. Well, we're forgetting as well as that the, the South lost the Civil War. Yeah, so they wouldn't it, have so liked this. So they're not even in the they, they're not even united again. Well, even to the extent that when they're in the bar scene, where it's the first extreme case of prejudice that we see, where he's been beaten up, Don Don's been beaten up, and Tony turns up and says, "You better let him go." Oh yeah. And they the guy the bartender says, "Get these Yankees out of here," which is a term for the northern states. You know the the right. the for the north. Yeah. So there's always, there is a divide north and south in America. And then on top of that, you've got a racial divide. And, you know, they think, because the north thinks themselves superior to the south. And, you know, they all have images of each other. So there's a multifaceted layer of mm -hmm. just differences between everywhere. And it's quite, I, I always, it's interesting in several films because what we see is the, you know, we go around these manners, you know, almost like right. a glass menagerie or... You know, Tennessee Williams, like a Tennessee, yeah, Tennessee's Williams Southern balls, and it's always interesting to see this way of life. Now we look at it and go, that is just exist to us, you know these these decadent houses and the, these large lands and these lavish balls and multitudes of servants and all that sort of pizzazz that only really exists now for royalty, you know. Yankees, that's interesting. That how that is how we French call uh, old people from the U.S. Do you really? Yankees, yes. And Yank we, we call uh, British roast beefs. Oh, no way. <laughs> Not beef eaters, because they actually are a thing. Yeah. the no, nothing uh, to at do the, with... At the Tower of London. Yeah, right? yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's hilarious. Roast beefs. Yeah. That's quite funny. Uh, Yankee is the, obviously the term for, because of North New York, a Yankee. You know, the, the well, sure, idea, sure. that's where it comes from. Mm. Yankees. Because the New York Yankees is, is the baseball team now, but the name descends further back than that. Right. You, you got to love the lovely aspect in there with the uh, letters to Dolores. Oh, excellent. <laughs> lovely. So sweet. And I like as well, in the end, she's like, thank you for you know, helping with the letter. Because <laughs> I was also thinking, there is no way that she thinks that this is her husband because he just one day decides to be a poet. Like, no, there's... P.S. Kiss the kids. 
Exact. I mean, that is sweet. That is such a sweet little um, amendment. Yeah. I, I also quite like the way that he kind of sees the world as in face value. You know, he's just like, and now I'm eating eggs. And then this happened. And then a car went. And it's like, I wish my mind worked like that. It'd be so simple. Yeah. yeah I mean, of course, Don Shirley then talks, you know, makes it a bit more poetic. And <laughs> his, his wife and I, I'm guessing... Their fa like family friends over Christmas are like, why don't I get a letter? <laughs> I want a letter like that. Yeah. Oh, the good old days. Yeah, back. Of yeah. letters, yeah. no yeah. texts and stuff. The, the name of the guy, but eh, where's my letter? Well, when you do dinner, when you do dinner. <laughs> when you make me a meal. Oh, dear. I'll get you a letter. Yeah. Um, I did like in the very beginning of the film, we get a very almost homage scene to Goodfellas. You know, with the with the guy arriving at the table and welcoming people, and like the scene in Goodfellas where um, Ray Liotta impresses the the date by walking through, which famously they had to do the shot where he walks through the kitchen and sees other staff because they couldn't film at the front door, so they made the shot of going through the back and walking their way through. You know, there was a very similarity of that sort of club, which I quite liked, which I think is intentional because it's introducing to us this world of um, Italian... Ease and convenience. Uh, ease and convenience and Italian mafioso, sort of, like the Italian community. Oh, really? Yeah, I mean, because you see this in this film that, like, oh, if you wanted a job, you come to me, man, I'll sort you out. That was terrible. But... Uh, Anuka, Anuka's <laughs> looking for a representation. <laughs> um, yeah, so... it. it it's very like linked and if you need something you you talk to your, my uncle bobby and frank <laughs> frank down the road etc et down the road yeah they wouldn't say down the road would they down the block down the block he's four blocks he's over two blocks over. yeah exactly um make it the fifth and so this kind of shock that anyone would take on this this job or want another lifestyle it's very funny how these things come to pass because it doesn't matter how distinguished how lovely how eloquent intelligent you are this person it will never be part of that society hmm. that's it's it's so crazy because it's not even about yeah you're all right i don't like you it's more that like i don't like any of you black people you know i say that in inverted commas i didn't say that you're quoting from the movie yeah it's very shocking. How is this a thing? Mm. But it's I think it was really important to see, actually, because we, I, I've never seen that. It's more of a feeling or a saying or just ignorance. And so it's nice to see that sort of portrayed on film that like it was a lot more intense. A mm. hundred years after slavery it was abolished, a black guy trying to play piano in the deep south. There should be no problems, right? It's it's funny because you watch that, you see how they lo they love the performance, and there's in these moments that everything is kind of suspended. Yeah, that was clever. There's no, you know, nobody's watching him going, oh, "It'd be a better if he was a white player." There's no atmosphere of that. And then when he's not playing music, he's just, you know, another, another one. Yeah, in their eyes, another part of the help. Yeah, yeah, basically. yeah, yeah. But then just goes to show how ingrained this this must have been. Yeah, you were amazing up there. And oh my God, you're so talented. And we will clap you and we'll be so happy that you're here. But don't you dare use our toilets. It's funny as well, because his, Don Shirley, I don't know if it's fact or not, but there's a, the hint in this film that he was gay. Oh, yeah. I forgot about that scene. Where he's he's they incarcerate him because they find him in the, the YMCA with another man. I, I mean, I can't, I can't imagine what it would have been like to be black and gay. Yeah, God almighty. I mean, I quite liked how he, Tony handles that. He goes, look, I worked in clubs. I, I get this. Like, that, I know that life is complicated. That part of that part of Don's life, he understands because he that is in his world, and there's a slight connection between them. Like, look, I I get it. Yeah, there's and also it, a slow realization that I might have been wrong about this person. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So it's of like course. there's probably a point where he's like, if I was wrong about that, maybe it, you know I can also understand how someone can be homosexual. Mm. Um, yeah. I don't know when homosexuality became legal well after it was deemed uh, to no longer be a mental illness probably oh definitely it might have still been a mental illness no after it was it found legal because mental illness isn't 
illegal. I don't know. Maybe, maybe both of those things changed because, I, and it, I mean, it definitely was in 1962 where this is based. I mean, if you're in God we trust, if your original laws are based on the Bible, obviously that's illegal. That's what is written sure. in there. So you have to evolve uh, with stuff coming your way. Yeah, yeah. So societally, you have to. And I, I mean, even now we still have people, you know, who are anti-abortion for different reasons, but some of it's religious, anti-LGBT. There are only two genders. A lot of it stems from religion and knowing that this was my world for ages. Why can it not stay that way? Why do we need to change these things? And it's like, well, actually, some people feel like they are not part of that group and that's okay. It takes a long time for society to change because you can change laws. And that, I mean, that takes a long time, but to change people's minds are like, that's where the difficulty is. It's, it's, so. di it's difficult to dis def define in America because it's what you, it's, it's what you're trying to find out whether being that is gay. For example, in Britain, that was, uh, the, am the amendment to that was in 1967. Uh, okay. that was when that was amended. But in America, I mean, I think it's just recently that all states now allow same sex marriages and stuff like that. So I can't, I can't pin marriage is different. Marriage is different. I can't pinpoint that right now. Marriage is different because marriage wasn't allowed here until a few years ago. Yes, yeah, as, as a marriage, as well. not even as a, a same sex partnership. Civil like partnership. Mar yes. Allowing homosexuality actually being illegal mm. where people were. It was, right. it was jail or castration, I think it was. Castration? Chemical castration, yeah. If you're not, you don't know the case of Alan Turing. That's horrible. Mm. I mean, I think I knew that, but anyway. So Don Shirley, yeah, it seems like he there was a hint of homosexuality, or even just getting drunk and I don't know, experimenting. Who knows? He doesn't seem the type. Well, to he was experiment, a he was but... a very lonely guy as well. So that's heavily implied. Yeah. So, yeah. Oh, definitely. But I think there were certain, what I liked about this film as well is that it wasn't just doom, doom, doom. Like there were moments where actually people's minds could be changed. And this is how you change society as a whole. Because you have, so for example, you have Tony Lip and Dr. John Shirley becoming friends. Um, you also have the, the last scene where Don Shirley comes to spend Christmas with Tony Lip's family. And of course, there's a lot of prejudice and racist things being said all throughout the film. So you know that there are prejudices in this family anyway. And so you are worried, that, you know, for him to come into this environment. And actually, they're like, there's a bit of a silence. But then they're like, oh, let's get a chair. Like, do you know what I mean? Like They don't tell him to fuck off. Mm. And so I think that was the film's way of saying, like, like, there are good people, especially with the police officer that then lets them go. And his whole thing is like, is there a problem? Like, I'm going to have a bit of attitude because I know, you know, what police officers can be like. And he's like, yeah, did you not know that this is a, yeah, like th illegal? <laughs> I think it was an interesting way of showing that they actually switched from the southern part to, again, the northern part yeah. to be arrested the second time. I didn't know that he was a uh, Northern American a police officer. I thought he was just a nice guy. Yeah, I took the nice guy was the one in the prison, the young one. But I'm pretty sure that the last one meant that they actually were already back in the north. Well, right. snowing for a start. <laughs> right, right, right. Because the police officer was like, actually, you know, he does is allowed to have a... Why is he in this prison? Yeah, he has rights. He has rights. Oh, yeah, that's that's the line. He has oh. rights. And they're like, ah, oh, fuck's sake. Obviously didn't want that to happen. And that famous scene then, but who the hell did he call? Ah, oh, yes. Brilliant. Yeah, you see often this one, but yeah, that was uh, nice. Yeah, it shows his influence, doesn't it? As as a man, it's amazing. I've, something else about the film that I found interesting was the fact that I could see a, a journey going on. Right. In both sense. There's a literal journey in the film mm. going south. But there's also, you can see, you can see the gear shifting. I don't know. Maybe it's because we're coming off Roma, which is it's super subtle, the gear changes. I didn't necessarily mind that I could see this story taking places and places because I was in on it. I was, I was going with it. 
Yeah. Um, and it could go either way, right? Like this could be really bad or really good. Like you didn't know in a way where it was going. Mm. I, it was exciting. I also think this is this film is very accessible. Oh yeah. Um for anyone it's a very it's cuz because it's a comedy. I don't know if it's defined as a comedy, but there's definitely many laughs in this. Yeah, it's light heart. I was laughing the whole way through. Yeah, it's a very it's great because you can just jump in and you can go on this this story that does handle other issues that we've talked at length at this episode. Because, yeah, because that's right. what stuck with us as well. Basically, the the fact that it's a comedy is it makes it more accessible because although there are deeper themes that we've discussed at length here, we wouldn't be discussing these if the film didn't accurately make us think about it you know uh, on top of being a comedy comedy drama comedy drama okay which is good because i thought it was i thought it was a bit of both yeah and when we get to the when we get to the final confrontation of like when the the, the straw that breaks the camel's back and the last show and the the whole like ah like, fuck it attitude it's like well, never mind it fe- that feels earned you know because we've we've been on the journey too it doesn't just feel like oh you're throwing in the towel at the last minute as an audience, we're with it because we've been through every every sort of night and we've seen the, the back and forth and we know who this character is. And when it comes to being like, look, you can't, you can't, you can perform in this room, but you can't eat dinner in it. You're just like, all right, it's enough's enough, you know, like at some point you go, nah, forget it. Yeah. And it, you're totally rooting for him when he's like, well, I'm leaving, you know, because he's taken so much stuff and he's been distinguished and amazing the whole trip. And then the last bit you're like, so, yeah, exactly. Something's going to give. And, and he does, he leaves. He's like, I'm either I eat here in this room or I'm not eating in this whole establishment. Or I'm not performing. Yeah, I'm not performing. Or I'm not, yeah, perfor- yeah. I'm not performing. Exactly. We went on a very effective and strong journey from prejudice and hate to a strong friendship Yeah, yeah. in 130 minutes. Yeah, it was, it, was, it was pretty amazing to watch, actually. Definitely would say this film was a success. Do I think it'll win Best Picture? I don't think so. Um, Although Stranger Things have happened. I said this when we left the cinema. I went, you know, Forrest Gump won Best Picture. Yeah. And for, and the lightheartedness, this has an air of the lightheartedness that Forrest Gump had, you know. And it was, addre- it was addressing separate issues and the same issues in, in different degrees, you know. And here we're addressing issues in a light-hearted way as well, which Forrest Gump would definitely be defined as a comedy drama. So the genre itself isn't necessarily immediately, yeah, you're not going to win. I think that, I think he has a really strong chance at supporting actor. I really do think he's got an, ex- uh-huh. I think he's got an excellent chance with yeah. this performance. We haven't seen all of the the nominations though. No, that's so true. So I, I, I don't even know what other films could win. Well, I'm curious to see Richard E. Grant. Yeah, can, in, can you ever forgive can, me? And can you ever yeah. forgive me? I'm very, yeah. I'm very interested to see that. That should be interesting. And then Adam Driver is up for Black Klansman as well. I haven't seen that yet. No, uh, but I've only heard good things, and it sounds like something that I'd really like to watch. Oh, do you like? Great idea. Do you like Spike Lee? I do. Oh, there you go. Yeah, yeah for a treat then. <laughs> do we have anything else yeah. on Green Book? No, not necessarily. No, I, I, I really did enjoy it, and I felt. The the fact that it's an, it made it's made us have these conversations, yeah, is a great achievement for a comedy drama as well. And yeah, I I like at last that Jan has found a piece that didn't pander, and actually, because I know Jan has trouble with you with especially with Vitonia last year about a film just like ramming it down your throat. I'll talk about um when we arrive to the rating. I'll, I'll have a few more points, but yeah. All right. <laughs> well, if we've not got anything else to add, I mean, may as well go into the rating. Was Green Book good, bad, or just plain standard? Anouk? It was good. I really, really enjoyed it. And I totally agree. Like, I think it's so important that we talk about these things from what happened, but also what people went through then and also now and hopefully not in the future, like how to change it. Hmm. Um, So on that standpoint, it's really good, but also it was super entertaining. So as like an entertaining film uh, to do both. Yeah, I I agree. It it was, it was so good. So if you haven't seen it, which you should. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, When the film was finished, when I saw that at the start of December, I was like, yes, at last. Thank you. So yeah, good. Very, very high good. That's how I think a very good way to treat the subject either like this or completely absurd like sorry to bother you 
I prefer these two approaches and uh, what uh, Daryl Davis is doing with the uh, the black man uh, attending Ku Klux Klan uh, rallies. I mm-hmm. prefer those type of approaches to actually what you get with black landsmen. Okay. Yeah, which is it ends with stuff saying that Trump is a racist and stuff like that. That's a bit too heavy-handed for me. Yeah, this one goes very high in the good. Green Book. It's also the name of the uh, political manifesto of Gaddafi, Green, the Green Book. Ah, is it? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Funny. Wholeheartedly and with a warm uh, smile on my face. Mm. Please watch this. <laughs> Definitely. I echo both points. I think sometimes when you see a film up for best picture you immediately go oh i bet that's a slog i don't want to compare it to rome i'm not complaining quality wise pacing is a different a different as a genre but it's an extremely well paced enjoyable great time so it's a very high good for me i'm glad it's i'm glad it's nominated it's a nice piece of cinema it's glad it's nice to see that it's something that handles a subject in this way and have some great performances i've seen a few reviews of it that say it's an average movie with some great performances that outshine it I think acting, I think you're, if you've got great acting in a movie, I mean, that's instantly going to bring it up to a, a decent level. So this is a very, this is a good one for me. This is, this is a good category. Yeah, I agree with both of you. Yeah, I think some people watch it as something that's lighthearted and they, they might um, confuse that with like, meh, it was an all right story when actually you found it entertaining and actually it will stick with you. Like, even though it's heavy themes, I would put also that in the same category as Chef, a feel-good movie, kind of. Uh-huh. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, it is feel-good. Heavy themes, feel-good film, um, which is super hard to do. So actually, I don't think it's all to do with the actors. I think yeah, I there's, think there's yeah. definitely, because with the jelly beaning and those balancing those two things out is, is, is difficult, man. Mm. Uh, Peter Farrelly has a nice track record of those. It, it certainly uh-huh. looks that way, yeah, yeah. Definitely. Uh, now is um, we have five minutes to talk about stuff. I actually have a few things. Ooh. Go uh, for it. I just learned that uh, Ultraviolet will shut uh, its doors in July. Oh? You know, when you, you used to, when you bought a DVD or a Blu-ray, you had a little um, purple uh, card with a code. Oh, Yeah. So that will close its doors. Oh, no. So, so Shame. You, you'll have to connect. Yeah, I have 110 movies in that library. Oh. Um, but oh. they're connected on some other retailers, so that should work fine. Okay, okay good, Fingers good, crossed. good. Solo, a Star Wars story just arrived on Netflix. Oh, did it really? Yeah. Already. Yeah, that's not a good sign. That is not a good sign. Wait, that was like, that's like 11 months. I mean, it's today is the first of February to date this. Seven days to my birthday. Well, but even though like Roma wasn't it three weeks and then onto Netflix? I think that was a, that was the plan, though, right? They w- oh, so this wasn't the plan. No, like, of course yeah. not. No, 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 no. Yeah, so they wanted cinema. Do you think? They, for a year. Do you think they want that on there quickly? Because I mean, Rogue One is already on Netflix, and they've now got they've now got Hat Solo mm. because to, this is the year of Episode Nine and Disney Plus. Oh yes, that's true, isn't it? That's, uh, and I, I, Who knows? I noticed a few days ago, actually, that now VPNs can work with Netflix. Oh, oh really? that's good, yeah. Because yeah, you need a, a license some browsers don't have. To, right, yeah. To yeah. be able to watch, actually, with a v- US server, to be able to actually watch solo. That would oh, be right, good, because okay. I, I go to uh, Germany a lot, and there's quite a lot of things that I want to show my mum, but I can't because I'm in Germany. So it would be nice to bring over my laptop and be like, oh, yeah, <laughs> like, you can see this on Netflix, in British ne- Netflix. In the Isolani episode, Paul said he worked on The Magician, The Magician's show. So I finally had a go at it. It's on Prime. And I got to say, it's quite addictive. Oh, nice. Really? Uh, it's not for kids. <laughs> it says uh, on the web, it says 15, but on Prime, actually, I, I think it says 18, which is a bit weird, but definitely yeah. not, not for kids. Okay. That might be American, British. We do, that we, 15 only exists in Britain. America's got their own system. We do the age number. Yeah, so do. maybe in, in, in America, it's 18. Uh, so like rated R. E, oh, do they not have 18? No, no, no. It's like... it's NT17. P- NT17, rated R. PG thirteen. These sort of, they have a different rating system. Uh, we've got we've got U P G twelve A fifteen eighteen. Yeah. Eighteen plus. And then X. Um, yeah, an X, sorry, that's really right. In Isolani we also we talked about mental health a bit and also we had a eight minutes bit in the Bandersnatch the following week. Uh, I'll just add now 
to crush this whole comparing yourself sentiment that Prinella or New York or, or I don't remember what the name is. Your, of Gary your, is mine. Gary? Gary is mine. Uh, something that has always worked so far since August 2017 for me. When I see something on Twitter that really annoys me, I'll go edit an episode or take <laughs> notes for future podcast ideas or anything productive related to the podcast. Thus, I am glad to inform you guys that we currently have on the iMac Anna with Alan and Tommy, Roma at Fringe 2018 and the, and the wing of the thigh in need of a good unblocking. Yes. <laughs> I have depression. The reason why I'm saying this because sometimes I have a really bad day and I honestly cannot get out of bed. And Adam said to me, watch a film spend the whole day watching films and taking notes so you're not doing anything but you feel productive and actually sometimes I'll watch one film and be strong enough to get out of bed and do something that I like an hour and a half before would be like mm. no fucking way I'm moving at all this whole week so actually sometimes just moving your like doing something that you can do takes the small steps to be like oh actually i'm strong enough to do anything I like i'm just going to walk outside etc it's, it's a mental shift i think realizing yourself that you're doing something productive even though you don't know it is a great step and acknowledging the little minor victories you have is also a great step yeah for instance yeah. you last night we watched the big short and you usually hate watching new things you yeah. have a distinct hatred of this, not going to the cinema, but like because of your anxiety and the way your brain is, you d you don't like what could new experiences. Mm -hmm. So the fact that you sat and watched the whole of the big short and wasn't enthralled by it is a is a great step and it's yeah. a good step forward. I like to write those down. Like sometimes even just a littlest thing, like I brushed my teeth today, or something yeah. <laughs> like something really simple is like silly but actually when you're in that mindset of like i can't do anything it's like so so amazing to like look down that list and be like actually i have done something today i'm not useless basically is yeah. what it's funny in the family episode my brother at some point makes a joke like uh, i was talking about how he was talking about how he came to his place sometimes to do some painting mm. but i never did the painting uh, because I was depressed and uh, but it was always pushing me like be productive do stuff now either taking notes or actually going to and when I that's immediate there's Twitter crap okay I, I have four episodes uh, I'm late for four episodes let's go to to one uh, yeah. two new things uh, and then I think we're done uh, I removed our 10 minute production meeting from the actual Bandersnatch episode <laughs> uh, yes. <laughs> but as Patreon had that I'll just add now that uh, when there are um, episodes movies that are really important that you watch them before I'll put an image in there uh, like uh, just like now we have a minute of uh, one and one uh, stuff before each episode the image will be of the uh, spoil yourself website that was a few years ago netflix launched a website you press the button and you would spoil yourself high profile series that was on netflix oh wow <laughs> oh amazing That's quite good. okay yeah, the ending obviously yeah 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 <laughs> uh, do you remember the isolani episode when jenny paul told us then jenny asked him about the review he had not read before the nerve wracking performance for which he wasn't sure what it meant if, if it was a good thing oh yeah and it was indeed uh, my review was it okay yes. ah, that's awesome that's, that's funny um, if you fancy come to see me on a wonderful piece actually it's really well written by the director and our friend who did nothing on the 27th of february at the old hairdressers in glasgow at 8 p.m uh it's kind of it's not a showcase thing it's like there'll be a performance of a piece and then there'll be a break so you can go to the bar and relax and then you go back and see the next piece and so forth so it's like it's a, it's a showcase but it's not like you sit and watch the whole thing it's it's staggered it's very chill uh yeah very chill so if you're in the glasgow area fancy come to see some interesting pieces of theater some new writing i don't even know what the other pieces are yet but they sound interesting uh, yeah it's, you'll find out on the 11th anyway. it's called uh, melting and it's by Fay theater come on over watch it'll be good I'll be in France, unfortunately. Damn. Oh, shame. Never mind. But um, if anyone else yeah. listening is in Glasgow and fancies a, something to do on a Wednesday evening, if they've not got anything on, mm -hmm. come along. It'll be a good night. Ask, us about, ask us about the podcast. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Give us a movie to review. We'll do it. All right. Sweet. Thanks for listening. 
numbers are are steadily that that keeps the being steady. Yeah, we're doing we're new, twenty thousand is fast approaching. So cool! Thank you so much, everyone. He's yeah. listened, reviewed. So so cool. I know you hear it at the beginning of every episode. Each one of us telling you to review, but it does help us out a little bit each time. Yeah, we get a review and whatever. We'd love to break the top two hundred for film and TV in the UK this year. Um, Please. Hoping, even if we were two hundred, it would be amazing. Thanks a lot. So. Thank you so much. Merci. 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 Cheers, Merci. Dankeschön. We were Adam, Anouk, and Jan. Bye bye. 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 Thank you for listening to another episode of the Good, the Bad, and the Just Plain Standard podcast. If you like what you heard, you can leave us a review via iTunes. If you want to keep up to date with what we're doing, you can check us out on Facebook and Instagram at Good Bad Standard Podcast on both platforms. If you fancy seeing the live streams that we talk about on the podcast, they can be found on YouTube.com. You search for Milk in a Wine Glass. There are other bits and bobs in there too, just to see what Jan's up to during the week. And if you really like us, like really, really like us, why don't you head on over to patreon.com slash goodbadstandardpodcast and have a look if you want to support us. Any small donation is appreciated.